Hi, everybody. This campfire music session was Monica Hilton's good idea, and Chet TV just took it and ran away with it. I've got a, a story to tell, since this is a campfire, right? So um, it's kind of a runaway story, and it's very fitting because we're in the barn right now, and this is about a very unlikely chuck wagon horse. And um, way, way back, way back, uh, we were just married and my husband just had to have a horse. And uh, we were living in the Hudson's Bay lowlands of Northern Ontario, polite term for bottomless, little black fly infested swamps. And you've heard of black fly, the little black fly. It's all horribly true. Anyway, we didn't have much money, but we pooled our meager resources. And the only horse we could afford with the least objectionable traits was an American saddlebred, two years old, with the dubious name of P. Vines, Mr. Genius. So you go to a horse show and they say, third place is P. Vines. You say, who the heck would give? Oh, it's me. So anyway, thank heavens for nicknames like King. But he had a regal bearing. He learned fast. And uh, he had a good sense of humor, which I appreciated, sometimes not. And he was pretty keen. So American saddlebreds are built a little bit different than a quarter horse, but King carried this to extremes. He had an extremely long neck and pie plates for feet. And we always wondered if he was a purebred or the only successful mating between a camel and a giraffe. <laughs> anyway... Hubby, back, uh, log, horse logging in the hills of New Brunswick had dreamed of being a chuck wagon driver. So we got some more money out of the piggy bank and we bought this really inexpensive homemade wagon, just like a chuck wagon, painted white with red racing stripes, Volkswagen wheels. It ran like a charm. I could pull it. And then he proceeded to train that horse to a high level of perfection. So every evening, we would hitch up the horse. Oh, I forgot to tell you, we needed the right harness. And that's the collar way up there, hanging way up there. We had an old inherited workhorse harness and this Mennonite harness maker cut it down to king size. So with the harness and the wagon every night, we would go out on the back roads, find a nice straight stretch and hubby would gather up the horse and he'd finger the reins and he'd quietly say, king and that horse would put his ears back and he would spread his hind legs 12 feet apart lower his butt to the ground and then hubby would go yeah and we were off front wheels right off the ground so this happened quite a few times and he was pretty fast and we were wondering you know if he was in the right situation how fast he would be so one day we found this road they were building on a, in the back there, a slight incline, very wide, and the grader had smoothed it out, you know, with sand. And when he was done at the bottom, he'd left a ridge about this high, and then he'd parked the machine out in the bush, out of the way. And we thought, oh, this is such a perfect racetrack. So the next evening, we gather some friends, Mary Ellen and Jennifer, and John in his 62 Plymouth. 
is going to clock the race. So here we are on top of the hill and hubby gathers the reins and he fingers them a little bit and he says, King, and that horse puts his ears back, spreads his hind legs 12 feet apart, lowers his butt to the ground and quivers with anticipation. And yeah, and we're off running, running, running. And Kimming running's like a jackrabbit. And John is right alongside with his 62 Plymouth. And he says, hey, you guys, you're going 30 miles an hour. Faster, King, faster. And King has got his legs past his ears and we're really going. And John says, you're going 32. And that's when we hit the ridge of dirt. <laughs> and everything broke all of a sudden. No horse, no hubby. And we're headed for the deepest ditch you ever saw. And I yelled, jump! And I jump and make a three-point landing, this being one of the points. And Mary Ellen jumps right on top of me. And we look back at Jennifer, and she's frozen to the front seat. Jump, Jennifer, jump! And she can't. And the wagon heads down into the ditch and goes up the other side, back and forth, <laughs> until it stops. Never even scratch the paint. Never scratch Jennifer either. But where was the horse and hubby? Well... When the wagon came to a sudden stop, the horse didn't. He kept going. And Hubby, being somewhat attached to the horse by the reins, <laughs> leaped over the front of the wagon at great speed, I suppose. And they disappeared into the bush. And, you know, between whoa, jumps, and whoa, whoa. And they would have plowed a path right down to Toronto. <laughs> If it hadn't been for King's parentage, you see, an American saddlebred is a gentleman horse, and they refuse to muddy or wet their feet. So they came to a murky creek, and King regained his composure just in time to put on the binders. Well... The dreams of chuck wagons faded, and we sold the wagon, the biggest mistake we ever made. And we moved out here, and we brought, uh, we did not bring King with us. We had him shipped out, and that's another story. And, uh, you know, he was out here in the back, growing fat and complacent, but this little spark in the back of his eye, I bet you if we got in a wagon and harnessed that old horse up, and if we'd sat there and hubby had fingered the reins and quietly said, King, and I always get broken up at this part, <laughs> anyway, we are now going to have a lovely commercial and then I will come back and sing. Oh. <laughs> Hi again, I'm back. And um, I will do this first song that I wrote last summer under duress. Uh, I was at a workshop with these amazingly talented people just like tonight. I'm just so humbled to be amongst these wonderfully talented people. And um, we had a writing exercise where you take, you know, two pieces of paper, you write a noun and a verb, you put them in two different jars, you stir them around, and each one of us took one of each. And we had to write a song. We had 30 minutes to write a song. And, oh, the words were beautiful. Rainbow, wishing, ocean, dreaming. I got truck and run. <laughs> I had 30 minutes, so I wrote an ode 
to my old blue Ford 150. And it's a very sad song. <laughs> Next song, like, I wasn't like Ian during COVID, you know, like, my brain dried up totally. And uh, I had all these melodies rushing around in there. I could not get words. And then somebody sent me this poem written by the late Irish poet John O'Donoghue. And I thought, oh, this is a song. So... I had to rearrange some words in some parts. I'm sorry. But anyway, I got a song. It's called Banach. And Monica Hilton says it's her song because it's another way of saying Bano, and that was her maiden name, you know. So she can have the song after tonight. But tonight, I want to dedicate this song to another Monica. And uh, Banach is a goodbye blessing. And my long time forever neighbor and friend and part of my family is moving away. So this is for her. And there's another Gaelic word in there, kanach, uh, which means a boat. So this is banach, if I can remember it. <laughs> um, Aunties went away dead and saw on your shoulders And you stumbled May the clay dance to balance you When 
masters be yours. The nourishment of the earth be yours. The clarity of the light be yours. The fluency of the ocean be yours. And the slow wind of love and It's woven warmth round you When the canvas frays on the cure rock of thought And a stain of ocean blackens beneath you May the moonlight above separate the dark waters And bring you safe nourishment of the earth be yours. The clarity of the light be yours. The fluency of the ocean be yours. And a slow wind of love, an invisible cloak, wrap its woven warmth round you. And a slow wind of love, an invisible cloak, wrap its woven warmth round you. counted on this song. I wrote it for someone special, and uh, I decided to take a lo lo local locale as my base. And uh, uh, most of you know where the Red Lion restaurant is. I don't know if it's still open or not, but when you come into the door, there's a wall with a menu on it. And then through the door, you can see all the tables and chairs. Well, behind that wall, there's a cozy little booth. And that's table number nine. Ba-ba-dee-da-da, ba-ba-dee-da. -da. 
I love you, whisper in my ear. Finger glitches. <laughs> Finger glitches. Now, I want to do another song, but I need a lot of help. I need, I need other people. <laughs> I, I need guitarists. I need singer. Where's my backup singer? <laughs>
Folky Strom Strom, James Mannion from the Mechanical Botanicals, Last Horse Standing, Simon, Joseph, Ooh. Denise. Thank you, everybody. We had a lot of fun. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Check TV. And then there were none. And then there were none. <laughs> Jack is gone. Thanks, everyone. Jack is gone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so very much.